looking forward to this folks we're going to do paint a watercolor christmas card now just to sort of show you the actual christmas card uh pack if if you like what i'm using i've actually got it here do you like the jumper and the fact that it's snowing in the studio i can promise you there's no there's been no expense spared i've been waiting to get this jumper on all year um it's actually snowing outside for real and it's kind of creeped in the studio it's going to settle on the head um but anyway welcome thanks for taking a bit of time out to join us today to have a go at some watercolor this is going to be a demonstration so i'll be painting fairly quickly at my own pace it's by no means a workshop so if you're trying to paint along you might find this goes a little bit on the quick side but you can always watch it back at any time now i've been working with search press for quite a large number of years 12 years something like that and i've published quite a lot of books with search press including uh, the bestseller uh, which is matthew palmer's watercolor for the absolute beginner you can check out all my books in the links in the description below so please have a look at those and um, there's all sorts of things in the um in the description below so if you fancy purchasing any of the materials that we're using today um there's also a link down in the description or maybe you fancy painting along with me on a live virtual watercolor workshop well they are happening pretty much every single weekend apart from a few that we miss here and there in fact there's one happening tomorrow that's sunday the 28th and i'll just have a little chat about that folks if you do want to have a go you can see the information at the bottom of the screen here i want to paint in step-by-step -step detail tomorrow sunday the 28th a beautiful uh, snowy owl look at the gorgeous pictures you can see down here so do have a little think about booking on to that workshop it's a 10 pound workshop it's very steady very slow a nice steady step by step pace this is going to be a bell to this hello if you've joined us live today look at what we are decorated with wonderful wonderful wintry watercolors try saying that after a couple of beers and i've had no beer i promise you but anyway enough waffle let's get on to the the painting let me show you what i'm using here if i just bring the camera to this one so it's a watercolor greetings card kit now you get 10 sheets of watercolor paper you get 10 bevel mounts you get 10 um envelopes and the pre-scored card with instructions now we do actually sell these on the website on on all the w's.watercolor.tv so do check out the website you can see it here on the screen all the w's watercolor.tv and do check it out now i want to pass this to my assistant who's hiding here look there it is thank you we'll pop that away whoever that is no idea it's like the thing from adam's family get down to the palette so just want to briefly touch on the palette. I've got a few colours um, hanging around. Um, so we have basically primary, let's kick these away. We've basically got primary um, colours, nice and simple. We've got some blue, we've got some blue there, uh, which is, is natural blue in this case. We've got some red, this one is natural red. We've got some natural yellow light as well. And I've got some white paint. So three primary colours, red, yellow, blue. I've got some white paint. All these are my own brand of colours. Again, everything is available on watercolour.tv. Click on the art shop. All these links in the description below. I've popped a square to them. And I have just a couple of brushes, to be fair. That's all I want for this, just a couple of brushes. So what we've got here is a size six round watercolour brush and a size 10 round watercolour brush so just two brushes is all you need for this because if you're painting christmas cards you don't want to be spending a lot of time necessarily on each picture it depends how many friends you've got i suppose um or family should i say but it's a quick process for me and that is one of the things i really enjoy about this now the actual paper size um is around about an a5 size okay roughly you're looking at sort of about sort of nine inches by about four but anything goes i have stuck this to a board you can see that it's stuck to a board and it is ready for action just going to get the camera nice and central i just want to bear in mind if you're watching this back folks originally this was broadcast live on the 27th of november during the search press uh, Christmas virtual festival and um, so it is live and you never know if something's going to go wrong especially when it's snowing outside the power might go off or something so just bear that in mind but hopefully it'll be good 
probably about sort of 20 30 minutes painting time on this picture and that'll be a nice um speedy paced watercolor demo again before i move on if you do want to take part in a virtual watercolor workshop with me matthew palmer there's one coming up every weekend this one at the bottom of the screen as you can see here is the one that's coming up tomorrow it's the same materials we've just mentioned the primary colors a couple of brushes and you will produce a beautiful painting of a snowy owl everything is broken down for you it's like one-on-one -on -one tuition it's like this you see me but I don't see you and it's great um, and the great thing is that you don't have to do it live if you're too busy tomorrow or whatever you can watch it back it's yours to keep forever so you can give it a few goes back to this then so let's paint in this uh, Christmas card so we're going to do a nice kind of scene with some sort of pine trees and that kind of thing so a wintry sort of themed uh, watercolour would work an absolute treat for this it really would um i am going to start off um very simply by taking some uh, masking tape and i'm going to remove the stickiness from this you can see i've stuck this down already um to a piece of wood but i'm also going to pop this on and it's probably going to go about a third and i'm just going to lightly add a bit of character so roughly a third up i want to give it a few little bends and a few little sort of just a bit of a wave nice and sealed then we can paint in the sky at the top now what i want to do is i'm going to use the size 10 brush to wet the top section of the watercolor paper i uh, i want to go for a nice colorful sky i'm not working to any reference material here there's no photographs there's nothing i'm purely and simply working from my head which is quite worrying <laughs> but please do st please do stick through to the end because you will enjoy this folks it will not be like watching paint dry hopefully it won't be like watching paint dry plenty of water gone on there let's get into the old palette then there it is and let's pick up some colors my first color is going to be something quite warm because it's a cold day today so we've got some yellow and a bit of the red again any three primary colors beautiful so we've mixed orange you can't go wrong with that let's get back to the picture you can smell the fear what we're going to do here is we're going to work up on an angle and add some color to the base i want to go quite vibrant with the colors on this one because i think a snow scene a snow scene can be a bit warm can't it it doesn't have to be a cold picture so that's that's an orange color we've mixed there right down to the palette let's mix up some violet we can mix violet simply by using blue of course and red i mean that's pretty straightforward there it is quite strong to be fair um because maybe later we'll put some uh, We'll put some some falling snow in this one but we'll, we'll see how we go i mean that's the great thing about this so i'm painting the sky i'm painting the sky and i'm weaving it down crossing the brush over and getting plenty of color creeping in across that background please don't be afraid to use strong watercolors especially for something like a wintry uh, scene because the contrast is going to pop off the paper again i just want to say that this is a demonstration um, and if you've ever purchased any of my books from Search Press, you'll know the quality of the books are very, very um, high quality, broken down, beautiful step by step detail. That's what Search Press are really good at. They've got a 50 year history of producing quality, and that's what you're going to get from a Search Press book. So, do please check out my books again the link in the description below and where you can buy some signed copies which is quite nice let's get close into this then let's get close into this little sky here beautiful and what i'm going to do here is paint in some distant um trees all right i'm going to paint in some distant trees and for this i want to make strong colors size six brush or is it a size nine brush i'm never sure which way to hold it it's a size nine now but then it's a size six if we it's been a long day today right so what we'll do is we'll take some more blue lots of blue nice and deep for your blue add a little bit of green sorry i meant to say add a bit of yellow which will turn it green call yourself a professional mr palmer there we go beautiful bit of rich vibrancy there thick green is what we're talking about quite dark so probably you know 80 percent blue that kind of thing and here we're going to have some distant distant pine trees a distant a beautiful distant pine forest um and all the time i'm doing this which is quite nice while the paper is a bit wet 
Make sure your paper's still wet. Is it me or is it moist? Make sure you check it out. Lots of little vertical lines in the background. The paint is spreading. Imagine you're dropping ink onto a, a, a wet piece of paper. That's the kind of effect that we're trying to achieve here. And that's exactly what I'm interested in on this particular stage of the picture. We're talking distance here. We're talking what's in the background. And this is just distance. Now I'm fading this off into the center. So I've got smaller, less paint on the brush. And I love how the paint feathers. I love how the paint feathers. It spreads, it disappears, it becomes part of the background. What I want to do now is go for grey. Now, you can actually buy a grey ready-made. It's called Matthew Palmer's Natural Grey. But here for this particular uh, painting, we are just using um, the three colours. So we can mix this quite simply by, by mixing all three colours together. So your blue, still snowing. I love it. Your blue, your red, your yellow. But if we've got that dark green, all we need to do in theory is just add a little bit of uh, red to that. And the red into that green will actually go grey. Would you believe it? There you go. Beautiful grey. We've we've created a grey from primary colours, which is better than actually using colours that are um, contain black pigment. Because one thing you don't want to do for shadows and things is create dark areas. So nice and dark at the base. Yeah, if you used Payne's Grey for this, it'd just leap out at you. And Payne's Grey does contain black pigment. So that's why we, I, I always recommend that people avoid that one. So I've gone for quite a tall tree. It's either a tall tree or a distant telegraph pole. Nobody knows. No one knows. But we can make it look more like a tree by adding some little vertical... Well, actually, like a diagonal line, to be fair, pointing up towards the sky. So we're creating some little pine trees again. You know, if you're painting a Christmas card for, you know, in mass production kind of thing, the I mean, one thing you don't want to do is spend a huge amount of time on each one, unless that's what works for you. But look how that's given us that tree, and it's brought the tree closer to us. Now I'm going to bring another one of those in. Again, I'm just using this number six brush, folks. It is quite a pointy one. The paper is just uh, at that starting point of drying now, so which is perfect for what I want for this particular little mini seasonal, mini festive watercolour. The paper is still damp. It's a beautiful surface that I'm working on. It does make a difference having a good quality paper. So always encourage people to get a nice quality watercolour paper. Nice and dark along that then. And this is the bit, this is the bit where people come unstuck. Let's come back. Remember we are originally live or be you might be watching this back at a later stage. Tilt it forward, a nice gentle tug of that paper, and hopefully we've got no seepage because nobody wants seepage. Nobody wants seepage, do they? But if you do get a bit of seepage down the back, lower your tape, lower your tape, and if you lower your tape, you can just paint a extended tree, if that makes sense. We've got distance, we've got a little bit of close-up happening as well. Happy with that. As it dries, the light reflection, can you see the light reflection that's caused by the studio lights here? Um, so that will disappear. But let's let's get creative at the bottom. While that's uh, having a little bit of little bit of time to dry, let me just have a little flick through. I'd love to show you, while that's just having a minute, folks, do please um, give me a moment to have a little chat about a few things. First of all, I just want to show you this. Now, this is the workshop that's coming up tomorrow, Sunday the 28th of November. Paint a stunning snowy owl, perched on a snow-covered pine tree. Step-by-step -step workshop. All the information is in the description below. And then the following week, the following week, we have this one. Sunday the 5th of December, paint a vintage festive market. There's beautiful Christmas markets. Uh, with Christmas tree and snow and watercolours again, all taught on a beautiful step-by-step -step basis. There's a link in the description below the video. You can check it out. You can watch it live or you can watch it back at any time. If you're watching this like this original live demo back at a later stage, then please do um, still click the link in the description and that will take you to the page where the up and coming workshop is. So this there's always a live virtual workshop um, actually taking place. Now that is just about dry. What I want to do, folks, is just want to show you a couple of my books that I've done with Search Press. Here 
we've got the uh, watercolour, that for a close up, watercolour for the absolute beginner folks. This book is one of Search Press's best selling watercolour books so do please check it out. It's full to the rafters of step by step tutorials on watercolour painting in beautiful gorgeous Search Press step by step detail. You can't beat the quality of these books folks, they are really well produced. And a big shout out to all the team at Search Press that put so much hard work into these. The the editors and the management and the marketing guys. It really is a huge, huge project doing a book. A book normally takes a couple of years um, from start to finish. So you can see, look at some of the beautiful scenes you can create here. So yeah, it's a book of two halves because the first half is very much how to paint little mini things like painting figures and you know how to do trees reflections and all the essentials it's like a little bit of a watercolor guidebook and that one is simply watercolor for absolute beginner check it out and then we've got one here that's quite relevant to today in a little way uh watercolor mountains i do love painting mountains this is part of the take three colors range again just head on over to search press's website have a look in the links below you'll see the books but this book here contains six projects and look at that for a bit of inspiration hey eh? if that photo is not going to get you painting nothing will maybe anyway six projects six uh, in fact nine projects actually there's nine projects in that book all done with the three colors that we use in today do check it out folks and um, that is a beautiful one to have a look at and we also have um a book called watercolor animals by matthew palmer check that out as well uh, painting without paint is a book that's based on um using your tablet as well and there's some up and coming books that are coming out in the new year as well so do have a look all the information is below the video that should be dry by now let's get back to it it's about time mr palmer let's get back to it and and painting something at the base let's put a little bit of uh a little bit of uh, landscape at the bottom. Yeah, you can see it's just starting to dry now. It's still got a little bit of a sheen to it, but it'll all settle in. Let's work at the bottom of the painting now, folks. We can get close into this. And the colour is going to be a violet. I want to use some violet in this picture. Okay. Um, when you think of snow, you think of white, but you do get shadows. And a good colour for a shadow in a snow is a violet. So a bit of blue with a tiny little spot of red works an absolute treat. So let's get that mixed up then. So basically, we're going to use some blue, not too strong, with a little bit of red. Just a touch of red. Um, less is more for the red. But that colour would be perfect for painting a wintry shadow. I want to put some detail in this picture as we as we progress through. So using that colour, beautiful, beautiful colour. I want to go nice and dark in this corner here. Just using a number six brush for this. That's all. Clean brush. Got some kitchen paper because I do sometimes get a little bit emotional when I'm painting. So that's for wiping up the tears or for dabbing off the excess water, which is a good thing to do, especially when you're doing blending like this, because you need to get that colour and you need to be tapering the colour away so it nicely fades into the distance there for a nice snow scene. It's quite it's quite apt that we're doing this because um, it's been snowing here today in Derbyshire, which is where I'm based, Derbyshire in the UK. And it, yeah, it has been snowing, so which is good. A little bit of snow. Very cold. There we go. So that's got a nice shadow. And that shadow will lift it up. It'll bring it towards us. Now, where's your light coming from? I reckon the light's coming this way from the right hand side. Whoever said that. So let's go for this and let's pop in some. Let's pop in some shadows casting down from these tall, these two tall trees. Let's bring those right over, and then we'll get a few little lines coming this way. So directional lines for these tall trees. Get the cast, the, the beautiful cast shadow. You can almost imagine there's another one off, off. Can I say off piste? Maybe. Just did. I apologize. I'll cut that bit out. What we'll do is we'll bring this over. Right, so. And that's giving us a lovely sort of light casting across the snow still adding more detail to this do bear with me do bear with me 
little bits at a time. I want to pick up that grey, the same grey that I used in those trees, just to be a little bit darker at the base of the pine trees. Because if the shadow is meeting that object, it's going to be really dark. So I'm actually using some of that grey. It's still there. It's just gone a bit dry. So I'm just adding a bit of water to it. Just to refresh. Perfect. And also, if we get a little a wee bit closer in there, we can also... We can also go in and just add a little bit of extra darkness to the base of these um, trees as well. So really giving this a nice bit of darkness, a bit of shadow. Yes, I'm going to put some snow on this as well. So do please bear with me on this one. Again, very much a demonstration. So it's always important to keep them separate workshops and demos. A demo is very much, you know, me working at my own little happy pace. Um, whereas a workshop is giving you guys time to, you know, sort of work along, so. But, uh, nice, that's good, happy with that. That's got a nice little bit of a shadowy thing going off there, a nice bit of texture. Again, it really wants just a little moment to dry that. And then we can add some nice, nice detail. I'm painting a tall tree over here. That will not take long to dry, not at all. Um, so I want to paint a nice tall tree. Let's come back with the camera so you can see where we're looking with this. But we've got a nice scene at that point. Um, I want to be mixing up a very dark green at this point. So if we get back to the uh, to the palette, very similar to what I used before. I can mix it over that same area. So it's lots of blue, but quite heavy with the blue. And then just a little dot of yellow. Um, if you ever want to make a, a green darker, more like a sage tone, just add a little bit of red to it, just a touch of red, but only a little bit, because too much will turn it brown. And it gives you a wonderful deep green, pine tree kind of green going off, which is what I'm interested in on this picture. Okay, Brill, what I want to do now, I think it's dry enough to do this actually, so I want to take another little bit of sticky tape, masking tape, stick it to the hand to remove stickiness, and I want to pop this just about here. On a slight downward slope, just a little bit of a slope. Just gonna pop that there, that little bit. Now this is gonna be the the base of a tall tree. I've also got the grey handy as well. You know, from the three colours that we spoke about, the it's the blue first, a little bit of red, which makes your colour purple, and then add a little bit of yellow, and that will give you a a grey. It's it makes such a difference. Everything's got shadows, you know, from, from shadows in your hand to shadows in the room. It really makes such a big difference. So well worth the energy on that one. Okay, let's go for this then. So let's start off with the green. That's the sort of main colour here. And I'm going to go for this. Now, if this kind of thing scares you, just close your eyes and do it. But we're going to paint a tall line. Steady on, steady on. Oh, my heart's going. <laughs> Tent it doesn't, tent it doesn't. Uh, and then we're painting this uh, tree. Now, at the bottom of the tree, we're going to have more of the grey. So I've got the grey in the palette, you know, the three colours. Nice and rich for this, don't be afraid. Be terrified. Bring it in. And the, you, you can see, can't you, just how thick that paint actually is here. It's really strong stuff. And this is more of a close-up tree. Obviously, so that nice richness, and like I said, I'll put some snow on this as well to make it nice. And, and there's a few ways to add snow, I'll show you one particular way. It's worth checking out my YouTube channel as well, folks, which again is a link in the description. There's hundreds of, uh, of free demos on there over the years of me doing the old watercolour, so do make sure you check that out. Also, check out the Facebook page as well. Uh, Matthew Palmer Artist on Facebook, so have a little look at that. We've got a really cool watercolour group as well, Matthew Palmer's watercolour group, and there's lots of inspiration there as well. It's a great place to chat about painting, you can ask me questions there as well. So if you'd like to join, do please check it out. It's, uh, as I keep saying, everything is in the, uh, everything is in the description below, so these branches are pointing up towards the sky. And then we'll get some little spot of spots at the top. A beautiful, uh, rich colour for that tree there. I love that. Nice. Can't beat a nice pine tree. And of course, because we've we've got some at the back, it really helps to give a bit of nice bit of scale there. So, you know, feel free to make it as tall as you need to. But as long as it's taller than these two guys at the back, it'll work fine. 
so it's well worth having a little think about the scale of it i'll put the gray at the bottom that always gives a nice bit of shadow and then we'll take the tape off nice and steady look at that oh oh beautiful beautiful okay we've got the uh, violet still you know for the shadow because we've got to put the shadow on i'm just adding a bit of water to freshen it up but it's still there loitering in the palette let's get a bit of a shadow it's gonna be quite a dark shadow here dark shadow let's get a bit of give it a bit of a base Again, I'll just squeeze in some of that grey, especially where it meets the ground, because that will really help it to, uh, to sit, ground it. It's going to be quite dark down there, isn't it? Lovely. And then I'm going to take that dark green again um, and add a few little little uh, blades of grass and things poking up in the foreground here. Little, little twigs and things kind of poking out of the snow here. This is better than being outside, isn't it? It's a bit rough out there at the minute, certainly. It's windy and everything else. So, is it is it windy where you are? It's not very windy in the studio. Well, I did have a bit of a curry last night, so I'm sorry. I can't help myself. Let's just pop some little little spots and dots around here, give it a bit of interest, and I want to put some shadows on these that are quite nice as well. So, once I've put those little branches on. I always like to make them stand up, these little branches. How would you make a branch stand up? You would add a shadow to it. So if I take some of that violet and pop some little flicks of violet on the base of them, they do actually surprisingly look as though they are stood up, don't they? They've got that bit of a shadow. I want to keep working on the shadow from that tree as well, give that a bit more interest. Really nice, nice to see that little bit of a shadow. Um, let's just come back and darken the base of that tree there now because it's all dry everything's nice and dry dries pretty quickly does the uh, watercolor so there's no no need to worry about drying times um, and also you can reactivate watercolor as well so it's it's never a major problem if it does dry a little bit just add a bit more color to it bro okay so that's basically the card waiting for some snow. Um, it's made quite a nice little scene. I'm just adding a few little hints and things here. I've picked up some of the green there and popped a few little bits on the base of that tree. And that'll give that a bit more detail as well. Perfect. And then let's get down to the palette. I've got a scrap piece of paper here, because when I use white paint, I like to pop it on a scrap and the white paint I'm actually using uh, is actually natural white it's my own white color what I've developed it's a fluid it's a fluid white that's quite easy to paint with so I just pop a squirt of that there this is it's just Matthew Palmer white have a look at it on the website you could use gouache you could use goulash if you want to as it goes little tiny bit of water is all you need too much water and that's just just disappears so it wants to be quite thick and i'm just using the number six brush here to pop some of that on beautiful thick watercolor white lovely back to the picture then what i want to do here is just make sure we can see what we're doing i'm going to start off by putting some some falling snow i think let's put some little random bits of white in the, the sky doesn't want a huge amount obviously but a few little random bits would give it a bit of a wintry feel nice yeah it all makes sense obviously as much or as little as you want to i would also drop some of those over the top of the tree as well you know especially the distant trees because it looks as though the snow is obviously falling in front of, of them and then using a dry brush a dry brush is opposite as a wet one so you basically tap off the excess on the tissue and then i can pop some snow some of this white on this tree here just a little bits of little bits of white 
if I'm honest, the green is still a little bit damp, but it's okay. I'm still still going to go for it because I'm using the white pure. There's very little water. A big mistake is too much water when you do use um, white. So watch out for the amount of water because what can happen is the paint just dries and disappears. So you just got to make sure that you get the. That's good, don't it? Just got to make sure that you've got the consistency right here. So. You can use masking fluid, but there's something nice about using white paint, if I'm honest. Quite a fan of it, as you can probably gather. Just a little bit of a little bit of snow coverage on the tree. This is definitely like watching paint dry. And then we'll add a few little hints in the background. I'm not too concerned about there because it's it's kind of in the mist. So as far as putting white paint on the background tree, I wouldn't be going over the top with it. A little bit is enough, I think, back there, you know. So yeah, if you've ever come across white, whether it's my white or any white, and you're using it, and it just like disappears it's it's because you've got too much uh, too much water on your brush so just watch out for the amount of water that is on your brush and you get your paint nice and thick and that's what makes this white different is it's it's quite it's quite a runny white from the tube it's not a thick white from the tube so you don't have to really add any water just a damp brush is all you want for white paint um or for this particular one anyway that makes quite a difference don't it? it looks very very festive and a nice nice wintry scene there with all the little bits of detail and uh, you probably noticed me popping a little bit over here as well just a little bit in the foreground to make it look as though there's a bit of a mound gives a bit of texture to it as well don't it you know just in front of the in front of the tree a little bit of pure white paint beautiful perfect there we go so nice bit of white it's quite addictive this putting the white on one of my favorite bits little bits of little little bits of texture little little teeny weeny bits of texture really effective into that and you know what's quite satisfying a good mount you can't beat a good mount and you get mounts with these kits these are the mounts i'm obviously talking about but you knew that i'm going to pop that on because these come as part of the uh, greetings card kits and we'll pop those on and it makes a lovely little festive watercolor to warm up it gives you a warm feeling in the stomach or maybe that was the curry but it looks really nice it looks festive it's got a bit of festive festive cheer all's missing is a bit of mulled wine and we've nailed it so that is the nicely detailed quick watercolor you can see what a difference the whites made instantly it brought it forward the falling snow you can add as much detail as you like to these pictures of course you can look at the beautiful shadows that we've got in the foreground as well casting the casting and we'll zoom back on this so you can see the whole card and that is a watercolor christmas card a nice sort of a5 size roughly a5 size Really enjoyed that, folks. Big shout out again, and a big thank you to all the uh, all the folks over at Search Press for setting up this uh, virtual um, Christmas kind of themed event. Um, a big shout out to Monica and and the team that works on all the social media side of things as well. So thank you for all you do. Hope you enjoyed that, folks. Do please think about checking out some of the books. Remember, that's just a couple of books we mentioned here, which was Matthew Palmer's. Uh, watercolour for the absolute beginner and of course the watercolour mountains book. We've also got a book on painting animals as well that's part of the ready to paint in 30 minute series. But just do a quick click on the link below and you'll see all the all the different um, um, books what I have published with 
so it's pressed and I look forward to seeing you again very soon if not have a great Christmas that's probably the first time you've heard that have a wonderful Christmas enjoy the snow and do think about booking onto one of our virtual painting workshops check out the Facebook page Matthew Palmer Artist and the Watercolor Group as well Matthew Palmer's Watercolor Group have a wonderful winter painting season and I will see you uh, very soon for some more watercolor painting and keep that paint flowing <laughs>